The people who succeed are irrationally passionate about something. Naval Ravikant. Are you irrationally passionate about stocks, ETFs, charting the market? That's what we're all about here, and we hope you are, because that passion is what's going to take you through the thick and the thin of learning this process. It does not happen overnight. It is developed 10 to 15 minutes a day, every day following these charts. And for those of you who have been with us for months or years, God bless you. You are well on your way, or maybe you've already achieved the ability to accurately follow trends. Now, we are not a stock calling service. We're an education firm. We also don't teach short tra uh, trading, whatever you want to call it, day trading, that kind of stuff. We are not about market inefficiencies. We're not about pennies. We're about tracking and practice trading dollars and tens of thousands of them. That is why we look for big trend changes. And when you look at the chart that you have before you, the S&P 500, when it rotated over going down at the close around the 307 mark, that was the last on the Friday where we had the weekly vertical crossover, we are now plumbing the depths of 218.26. Did you hear that? 218.26 versus 304, let's go back there, 307.71. My friends, that is just short, about $10, $11 short of $100. Now, again, when you look at the percentage here, remember we have inverse funds that track the opposite of the way the underlying ETF is going. There is a, sh a simple short fund of the S&P 500, that's SH, and around that same time period, it has gone from somewhere around 2519 all the way up to 3330, 3230. Uh, that's quite a gain. And again, all of that is available in your practice trade, depending on how you acted when you got in and what you did. Now, we don't follow the inverse funds. We always follow the underlying fund, whether it's up or down. We got a great training uh, that's, that's at the YouTube channel on inverse funds, how to track markets when they crash. And we want you to look at that because it explains more about inverse funds and how they can work for you. There's a lot to know about them. They are repriced uh, much more often the way that they work every day. They are repriced, uh, and it, it is different than your standard ETF. So inverse funds are priced differently and how they're calculated. So you can't stay in them for long, long terms, but you can sure use them in your practice trades along with options. And guess what? That options training is in your show notes today. One of three. So over the next two days, including this one, there's two more on options, and I want you to have those. If you're a subscriber and you need to be one at chartingwealth.com, it is free to sign up. Go there, sign up. The first one is options made simple, part one, how options work. It's really part three where the juicy, juicy stuff is, but you need the two prior ones to understand where we're going. And again, if you're not signed up, go ahead and sign up. There'll be a link if you get tomorrow's, which is, of course, going to be part two, there'll be a link to part one. I want you to take them in order. And then we'll be putting out part three. That will come out uh, later in the week. So again, want you to have that important information. We see the S&P 500 down for the day, 2.55%. NASDAQ was down just a little bit. Bonds and gold were up substantially. So let's talk about where we are. First day of the latest candle, big down candle on the weekly chart, lower low. We see things moving down. That is, again, nice to see why. Not that the market's crashing. We don't celebrate that, but that it's moving in the direction of our trend as our charts tell us. Okay, let's go to the two-day chart. Look at that. We're hitting lower lows. Price percent oscillator going down. That derivative oscillator is still losing some momentum, so we pay attention to that. That's our leading indicator. It means that as far as the acceleration of the down movement, 
that is backing off a little bit. But again, it's plumbed so low. Still moving. If you look at the two-day trend line and the weekly trend line, still heading down. Now, do keep in mind this latest candle is just the first day of the latest two-day candle. Still have Tuesday to get through before that candle will be fully drawn. And you can see where were you watching this with us? Were you looking for things to bounce off the red signal line? That bounce, of course, we saw starting to happen on Friday afternoon when things switched from green to red on the derivative oscillator and the price percent oscillator started pulling away from the red signal line, accelerated on Monday, particularly Monday morning. So that's looking nice. How many of you practice traded that? You were watching for it, I know. And of course, we leave now the S&P 500 still in strong down moves, 2.55%. Going to go to the NASDAQ 100, not as strong down, 0.14%. So um, again, not nearly the 2.55% that we saw down in the S&P 500. We do see the candle itself plumbing lower than the prior candle, and we see the wick on the bottom of that candle getting lower. Price percent oscillator still spiking down, derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum. So overall, that trend is still strongly down on the weekly. Today, again, we see the derivative oscillator continuing to lose momentum. Price percent oscillator still heading down, not at the same strong angle it had been earlier. So it is that is slowing down a little bit, and that's, again, showing us that the movement as far as the continued down motion is still going down, but slowing. That's why the derivative oscillator, the leading indicator, is backing off. But our lagging indicator, the price percent oscillator, which is our main indicator, still heading down. Price is still below that two-day trend line, just barely, well below the weekly. We go to the four-hour chart, and that's where we saw things cross over in the morning. And then, again, the solid green candle, it's... it's uh, a bit of a spinning top. It has a long wick on the bottom, a little one on top that shows you a slowdown in the down movement. Nonetheless, the derivative oscillator in the afternoon did flip over. So we see that four hour chart pulling back a little bit on the price percent oscillator after it crossed over in the morning. But remember, your weekly and your two day are still strong down. So pay attention. As to what's going on, we'll continue to watch and follow these. How many of you jumped in after that crossover going down in the morning? How many of you jumped in in the afternoon? I'd, I'd be curious to know what your jumping in point was. It was around the 168 mark, 165 mark, just where you jumped in. So we'll, uh, we'll continue to follow up on that. And again, remember, the trend is with you on that two-day and weekly. And when you have... All this kind of volatility, if you tag a very, somebody asked me in the show notes, uh, they were, or I think it was in the YouTube uh, comments, they were asking, how do you deal with this when you have such volatility? Well, that's why we talk about reducing your order size so that you're able to increase the amount of loss or profit, well, the, particularly the amount of loss that you're willing to take so you don't get out of a trade with just the volatility as opposed to there actually being a pullback. It does make it more dangerous, but it sure makes it more interesting, doesn't it? And for those of you who've been in, who've particularly used the weekly, and that's why we keep talking about how critically important getting in on those weekly charts are, and then using the two-day and the weekly to help you stay in as long as possible to reap all the profits in your practice trade. Now we're going to leave stocks and go to bonds on the weekly chart. Bonds up 4.12%. Look at what we see happening. We had a red spinning top, solid red, again, with all that down movement over the course of last week in bonds. As maybe things were unwinding, people were covering margin positions. Don't really know why, but bonds were going down when it seemed like they should have been going up. So we had this quirky week last week. Now, what do we see happening now? We see things taking off this week. Price percent oscillator spiking up. Derivative oscillator still losing momentum. That's from this past week and all the wildness, particularly with those down moves. We go to the two-day chart. What do we see there? Well, this is just the first day of the latest two-day candle, so we can't call it yet until it finishes drawing. 
Derivative oscillator still gaining downward momentum. That is from these four two-day charts. That's eight days of down movement. So the derivative oscillator is still oscillating down from that, but that price percent oscillator, our lagging indicator, is spiking up. Watch for things at the close of the market on Tuesday to see if bonds are going to cross back over, give us a confirmed recross. Your entry point, of course, for your practice trade would be at the close of the market on Tuesday. If things still look good in bonds and all the charts all the time to help you make your decision as to whether or not to pull the trigger in that practice trade. Did you note that in your show notes? Will you be paying attention tomorrow afternoon for a potential entry into bonds going up? Now, look at what we see here. Bonds crossed over on that four-hour chart in the morning. This represents two days of strong up movement in bonds, pushing through that weekly trend line, and of course, pushing through that two-day also. So again, going to be interesting to watch, see what there is to see. Some of you ask about, could I, with the way things were shaping up, could I have jumped in at the crossover in the morning on bonds? Well, for those of you who practice trade it, I hope that you have printed out your trade worksheet and you are following that and learning what you can from it. I always find these intersecting lines fascinating when you intersect with movement through a down line on the two day, an up line on the weekly. I want you to make sure you keep your notes and you learn what there is to learn if indeed you pulled the trigger on that around noon. We'll see how that works for you. Don't know what tomorrow's gonna portend. Don't have that closed candle yet to make that comfortable call. But again, this is all about trial and error, practice and learning. That's where we are, folks, as we end the day on bonds. Lastly, we go to gold. Gold up 4.42%, our biggest gainer for the day. But look at what's forming on the gold candle after that spike down over the week ending the 20th of March. I mean, look at that enormous red down candle. We see a green spinning top forming. That price percent oscillator, which was spiking down, is going flatter. Derivative oscillator still gaining downward momentum because the oscillation of all that down movement still affecting the derivative oscillator. And we don't have a red, we don't have a green open box candle. It's still a green solid candle, which means a slowdown in the go down as far as the Heiken Ashi candlesticks go. We go to the two day chart. We see a green open box candle forming. Price percent oscillators flat. Derivative oscillators losing momentum, downward momentum, which is good. Pushing through clearly and cleanly that two-day trend line. So we'll continue to watch, see what gold does. If it can gain enough momentum, that four-hour chart crossed over going up in the morning, pushing through the two-day trend line. But we will see if there's enough momentum in gold to pull that two-day chart over. That is the price percent oscillator crossing over going up and that weekly how long it will take for there to be enough energy after this blow off in gold and it could have been people selling gold to cover margin calls don't really know and of course we don't really care we just saw it happening we saw did we not see this we saw gold cross over going down and man jumping in on that action at the close around the 151 mark to a low of 136 oh, in a week, bam. So again, fascinating to watch. Things aren't necessarily over in the down move in gold. We're just watching. Of course, I'm just hoping since it's hard to short gold, there's not an ETF that really has a bid and ask that's anywhere reasonable to get into on gold. You can, of course, do options in it with this kind of volatility they're going to cost you. And of course, they do have more risk. But if gold rolls back over going up, friends, we can get back in it and ride that pony like we have done several times this year. That would be absolutely wonderful. That's where we are as we end the day. Again, I hope you are going to take our first part of the course on Options Made Simple. The next two will be coming over the next two days, parts two and three. We love to hear from you. We love your comments in our uh, in all of our sections, whether it's at the YouTube channel, whether it's at Facebook, or whether you email us, cw at chartingwealth.com. God bless. All the best. 
from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.